The Nintendo Switch came out in 2017, which means that as of 2021, the Switch has been on the market for about four years. So that means it's approximately halfway through its life cycle. Nintendo seems to introduce new consoles every five to eight years approximately, so I think it makes sense to look at how things are going with the system right now. Basically, what I want to do is showcase today's hardware, the system's capabilities, and games, and see how it compares to how things were at launch. Because back then, people had all sorts of expectations and wants, so we'll see if any of that actually happened. I'm going to split this into multiple categories. First, we'll address hardware, how the options change between launch and now. There's also functionality like video streaming, media capabilities, online functions, and the eShop. Lastly, there's the games. There's some noteworthy things to discuss when it comes to what the Switch's game library is made up of. There's Wii U ports, handheld games stepping up to be home console quality games, lack of new AAA titles, and an abundance of indie games, among other things. First, we should probably see where the Nintendo Switch is when it comes to the console life cycle. I mean, I kind of already said it's in the middle there, but you know, let's describe the different uh, phases, I guess. The beginning is probably the most exciting, that's when people still have questions about a lot of things. Console features slowly get unlocked through patches, well-known franchises often don't have their games revealed yet, and hardware refreshes aren't even on most people's mind, though a few revisions can sometimes happen early on. A somewhat recent example being the PS4, which had some internal and external changes before the Slim model came out. The midpoint of a console's life is usually when we start having a good understanding of the system and its capabilities, the games, and what may await us in the future. That's where the Switch is right now. The last part of the console's life cycle is also quite interesting. Sometimes that's when you'll find the best iterations of the consoles available. On the other hand, the opposite can happen. Like for example, the Wii Mini. That thing was very affordable, but that was because it was missing a lot of features. During this time, most of the anticipated games have already been released, and because most people seem to be focused on new consoles and games, it's possible to find some hidden gems. Used game prices tend to drop, and that's usually a good time for collectors to round off their collections with games and accessories that will eventually be difficult or expensive to obtain. Now, what I said isn't true for every system, of course, but broadly speaking, that's how it goes. All right, on to hardware. Currently, we have two choices. You get a, either a Switch or a Switch Lite. The Switch is the flagship product, of course. When it's docked, it's a home console. Take it out, it's a handheld. Put it on a table, and then it's on the table instead of in your hands, I guess. The Joy-Con are removable, too. Battery life is four and a half to nine hours, depending on how you use it and what games you play. The Switch Lite is smaller at a screen size of five and a half inches, rather than the regular Switch's 6.2 inches. It's not dockable, and it doesn't output a picture to a screen or TV. It's strictly a portable device only. It has non-removable controllers, though you can connect other controllers to it. Other than those two, there isn't anything else at the moment. Back when the Switch first came out, there was actually no light model. The Switch itself did differ in that the battery life was lower at 2.5 to 6.5 hours, rather than 4.5 to 9. That's quite a big difference, actually. That change happened sometime in uh, summer 2019. It took a while for all the old stock to, you know, get bought up. And now it's really highly unlikely to stumble upon one of those when uh, buying a new one. The old switches have a serial number starting with XAW, while the new one starts with XKW. When it comes to hardware, it's a little bit unclear what will happen in the future. It has been rumored for a while now that there's something like a Switch Pro that will come out. You know, like a bigger and more powerful model. Will it happen? Uh, maybe? I've seen so many rumors over the years in regards to consoles and actually a lot of other stuff too. And that never turns out to be true. Or a lot of it anyway, so... I'll believe it once there's an actual announcement from Nintendo. Oops, I hit my microphone. Sorry, I'm not gonna edit that out. If a Switch Pro-like device does come out, I do wonder if it'll be, you know, called a Switch, or if they'll go the route of, you know, Sony and Microsoft with the PS5 and Xbox Series X, and just offer it as a new console with backwards compatibility. Though that's probably more of a marketing thing rather than an actual hardware thing. The marketing department is gonna have to decide how they want uh, customers to perceive the product. Still on the topic of hardware, let's discuss uh, controllers for a little bit. The main Nintendo offerings at the moment are the Joy-Con and the Switch Pro controllers. 
Since the beginning, the Switch has been accused of having analog sticks that drift. As in, after prolonged use, the joysticks can start outputting a slight off-center signal, even though they are physically centered. People hoped that Nintendo would maybe eventually fix those issues, especially because the Switch Lite suffers from this, you know, that has non-removable uh, thingy-dingies. But uh, as of right now, that hasn't happened, so no revisions, and there probably aren't going to be any because, you know, they seem to be uh, firmly in the stance of it's fine how it is. Thankfully, it is possible to fix the drift issue by cleaning the thing, and Nintendrew has a good tutorial on how to do that. By the way, I should say that I have never had any of those uh, issues with the controllers, but that may be because I uh, spread my gaming time around multiple devices like PC and also other consoles, so that's probably a contributing factor there. Other controllers exist too, like, you know, the official NES and SNES Joy-Con and the numerous third-party offerings. But the main ones are the Joy-Con and the Pro Controller, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about functionality now. Surprisingly, little has changed with the menus. It's like a simplified PS4-style layout, which I think is a good thing. The most visible change is the red Nintendo Online button, which only became a thing at the end of last year. People have been asking for folders since the beginning, but Nintendo hasn't done anything there. In fact, when it comes to features, Nintendo kept the system really bare bones. When it comes to things like media capabilities, you can only watch uh, YouTube, Funimation, and if you're in the US, Hulu. I'm not sure if there's like, you know, other services in other countries, but that's all I could find. So let me know if there's uh, anything else out there. The Wii U had more functions when you, you know, compare the two devices there. You could watch Netflix and Amazon, for example. It had a web browser. And yes, it does have folders, in case you're wondering. In the beginning, the online play was free on the Switch, but that changed once Nintendo Online launched. Understandably, people didn't like having to pay for something that was free before. Online features are limited, and Nintendo hasn't really introduced anything, you know, like more advanced chat options, for example. There's some specific features for certain games with Nintendo Online, um, you know, like the Android or iOS app, but that's just for a very limited amount of games. And it's usually not social stuff either. One thing Nintendo tried to do to make their online service more attractive is give people access to both NES and SNES games. While that is pretty cool and I do like the library of games that they have there, it unfortunately killed off the virtual console portion of the eShop that was so popular with previous Nintendo systems. And I think that's a real shame. It was such a good way to get some good old games for a few dollars. And there's many Nintendo fans who bought their old favorite games through all the different generations. And that's not really such a bad thing to do if it only costs a few dollars, right? Another thing that is unfortunate about the lack of the virtual console is that Nintendo Online uh, doesn't offer anything newer than NES or SNES games. You know, like N64, GameCube. Not to mention there's no GameCube, or sorry, Game Boy games either. Like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, GBA. It's a bit of a shame. The Wii U even had uh, DS games. But obviously that was a bit of a unique thing there because of the tablet controller. But still, the lack of a virtual console does feel like a step backwards. Since we're talking about games here, that is an interesting topic on the Switch. At launch, the Switch didn't have that many games in its lineup, actually. Though it did manage to have a decently varied lineup by the 2017 holiday season, with Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 being some of the notable games there. Over the years, the Switch library grew in an interesting way, you can basically uh, split the library into a couple of different topics there. The first is first and second party releases. When it comes to those, Nintendo has relied on a lot of ports of Wii U games. Some examples are Mario Kart 8, Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, and now even Super Mario 3D World. As a Wii U owner, that's not really the most exciting thing ever, you know, to see those games being released. But for most people, those were new games, so I guess that's kind of the angle there. At least they added some stuff and enhanced the graphics a bit too. Of course, there's plenty of original Switch releases too, but it's interesting how there are so many Wii U ports. In fact, I can't remember any console that had so many ports of its predecessor's games. And you know what? They also charged full price, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> Another thing that's interesting in regards to first and second party Switch releases 
is that there is an entire segment of games that came from the 3DS, more specifically like uh, franchises and studios. The mainline Pokemon games are probably the most obvious examples, and uh, Fire Emblem is another one as well, even though that did have, uh, in the past, home console releases. The last one was, I think, on the Wii. With many of those franchises moving to the Switch, it's been quite interesting to see how they transition to the more powerful hardware. For me, it's great because I always wanted to see what some of those games would look like on a home console. And I think a lot of times the result has been pretty good. And at the same time, because the Switch is still a portable device, you know, the game is still portable, so it's kind of the best of both worlds there. And I think also the original Nintendo Switch games are pretty good when it comes to making use of the console's features and its versatility. So overall, when it comes to, you know, Nintendo stuff, as usual, they seem to do a good job there. Also with graphics and performance. But there's also the matter of third-party AAA games. Obviously, the Switch is suffering from a deficit in power. Now that the PS5 and Xbox Series X is out, there's going to be even less AAA games on the Switch. There are some current-gen titles to be found, though, and since the Switch is approximately at PS3 and Xbox 360 power levels, there are a decent amount of AAA ports from that generation or older. I think that's uh, pretty cool for people who like to play on handheld consoles. But again, what's not so great is that they often charge new game prices for these older games. I think that's a bit much. Some notable AAA Switch games are Skyrim, Bioshock, Doom, and Doom Eternal as well there, Dark Souls Remastered, Okami, Final Fantasy X and X-2, among many others. It's a pretty decent list. I think it's worth bringing up one specific game. Despite the resource-intensive nature of this game, it did end up on the Switch, and that's The Witcher 3. So yes, it is possible to put a big and graphically intensive game on the Switch. But what's the price? Obviously, it's going to be graphics. Clearly, it's worse than on the PC and even the PS4 and Xbox One versions, but it runs well. The game still retains its overall look and feel, and you can tweak some graphical settings to fine-tune the gameplay experience. It even has PC cross-save capabilities, which is really good for me because I mainly play it on the PC, but having the option to play it on the go was pretty cool. The Witcher 3 on the Switch was an excellent effort. On the other hand, the saddest example of a AAA game on the Switch is probably FIFA 21 Legacy Edition. EA didn't even care. Look at the official description on the Nintendo eShop. It says FIFA 21 Legacy Edition will feature the same gameplay innovation from FIFA 20 without any development or significant enhancements. The marketing department just gave up halfway through that sentence, it seems. Since we're talking about the Switch's lack of power, that combined with the portable nature of the system meant that there was also a lot of indie games. So I think that's pretty cool. The last category of games I want to talk about is anime games. As some of you may know, the Vita was a bit of a favorite for both developers and gamers who enjoy all sorts of niche Japanese games. As Sony supported the platform less and less, many people and companies started moving to the Switch, which, you know, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. And curiously, something that I've only first noticed with the Vita is happening now on the Switch, too. Recently, someone brought this up to me. And that's the fact that out-of-print physical copies have been going up in value quite a bit. I did notice that Astral Chain was slowly disappearing off of shelves and listings online showed the game going for more than retail. But I wasn't aware of the extent of this phenomenon. It's a topic I want to look into in the future. I'm not sure if it's because of the Vita collectors who now have a Switch, more proactive scalpers, or a combination of different factors that's driving the prices up. But yeah, there's a pretty decent ecosystem when it comes to anime games. Though it does seem that developers are not keen to go all in on the Switch, like they did with the Vita, because that kind of ended up being not so great for them, of course. And because there's like PS4 versions and PC versions now of those games, you can see that the Switch ports usually lag behind. They are usually smaller companies who make these games, they don't have the resources to really optimize the games for the Switch, and actually also the other consoles, so there's uh, some performance versions that are, you know, not only apparent in their games, but especially apparent on the Switch versions. After four years in, this is where we stand with the Nintendo Switch in 2021. A lot has happened, and it'll be interesting to see what will happen in the future, especially whether we'll see a Switch Pro or something like it. Obviously, this is just from my perspective. 
There's more to it than just what I talked about now in this video, but I think it's a good general overview of the last few years there. I've had my Switch since November 2017, so that's three and a half years. I'm curious to see what your experience has been like with the Switch so far, especially if you've had yours for a couple of years. Do you like it? Are you happy with the game library? Anything you're excited about in the future? Let me know in the comments. Remember to check out Patreon as well if you want to support the channel. You get updates as well as early access to videos. Check out patreon.com slash YSN or check the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.